Jackson County is in a strong financial position, despite dwindling federal payments meant to offset losses in timber revenues for counties. That, according to James Lanzarotta, partner with the auditing firm Moss Adams LLP in a recent presentation to county officials. This is kind of the way that we complete the audit process is to come before you and uh, talk about the results. On the financial statements, uh, we came to what we call an unmodified opinion. So basically, in layman's terms, that's a clean opinion. So you can't get any better than that. Basically, that means that uh, your crew uh, did a, an excellent job of capturing your transactions during the year and the balances as of year end. And they appropriately put all of that together in that annual financial statement document with the appropriate footnote disclosures in the bells and whistles required by the professional accounting uh, standards. So that's, uh, I think you've got quite a history of getting clean opinions and something you should be very proud uh, of. On the Oregon minimum standards uh, report, uh, so that's that uh, work that we did where we test about seven or eight state laws that you're required to comply with. And we had no instances of non-compliance. So that's uh, that's awesome result for you. Uh, so you should be very proud of your crew and the leadership you're providing that enables you to get to that point. This uh, chart shows you uh, some revenue trends. So we break it down in your major categories of revenues and uh, one of the things that I really like is the county's ability to attract those grants and contributions from others. And uh, look at that, nice trend line there. Property tax revenue has been really pretty flat. I mean, you're only three million more than you were four years ago. So um, it's in some ways for your residents, they should be pretty proud that you're out there finding grants and uh, uh, amounts from outside of the community that's driving the uh, a, a nice uh, for the revenue there instead of all of it being uh, from property taxes on the spending side uh, these are the major categories of uh, the different types of services that you provide so obviously uh, your management crew here uh, Danny and his staff have uh, had to deal with some you know, declining revenues or financial challenges, and they've uh, done that uh, fairly well with the general government services. Those have not swelled. What you can see four years ago, you were uh, your total cost of providing services here at the county was 159 million, and it's 134 million in this year that just ended. So you're down 24 million dollars from uh, four years ago. In, in terms of the, the true cost of providing the services here to your community. If you took all your assets here at the county and you liquidated them at book value and you paid off all your debts, this is what would be left over. So in 2011, that was 481 million. It's 483 million at the end of June of 15. And what I like about this graph is that it shows stability. I mean, it's easy to not replace, you know, a piece of equipment or not replace a building or, or not replace a bridge or do major maintenance, but that cost is still there. The only thing you've done is pushed off when you have to cut the check. Eventually that check has to be cut. So you've been maintaining your capital assets here at the county uh, very well. And then you know, you can ask yourself questions about those unrestricted, how much should I have? There are some best practices out there, and for most governments, what credit rating agencies and those that look, if you were to issue a bond, you know, they look at your general fund, fund balance, and a best practice is a minimum of about 15% of expenditures. And you've varied between 100 uh, down to 75, and now you're at 89% of expenditures as of June of 15. So that's a very, very healthy uh, position to be in. So yeah. I just want to make one comment. This is just to clarify for the yeah. public. A lot of times people will say, well, you had $100 million in fund balance, and now you're down to $71 million, <laughs> $59 million. What are you spending all this money on? Um, I think yeah. it's important for the public to know that what we've done is we've taken that fund balance and invested it in those capital assets right. that you talked about, buildings, infrastructure that the county has needed. In fact, we built over $175 million dollars of capital infrastructure in the 10 years that I've been here without asking taxpayers to pass one new tax. At the same time, we're spending 24 million less a year 
uh, as you said, and we're maintaining our assets. So I want the public to know that spinning down the fund balance doesn't mean that we're spending recklessly. What it means is we're making important investments. Mm -hmm. And in other jurisdictions, typically those important investments come on the back of taxpayers paying additional taxes for them. Yeah, good points. So really lots of good news today to bring to you. Uh, again, I know that it's a challenge to meet all the need in the community. I can't really address uh, that piece of it, but uh, you know, you can't really meet that if you don't have the financial strength uh, to, to begin to address those needs. And so uh, very good results for you in terms of the, at least the handling of the finan financial side of that equation.